My firm conviction is that we have to do much, much more than is currently happening. Every country on earth at the moment is reforming public education. The problem is that the current system of education was designed and conceived and structured for a different age. The problem is they're trying to meet the future by doing what they did in the past. And on the way, they're alienating millions of kids who don't see any purpose in going to school. They're being besieged with information and calls for their attention from every platform, computers, from iPhones, from advertising holdings, from hundreds of television channels. And we're penalizing them now for getting distracted. From what? You know, boring stuff <laughs> at school, for the most part. Media literacy really helps us understand the role and our relationship to media in society. And that's a really important skill for citizenship and for being a wise consumer as well as a responsible producer. Oh, neat, you did. How relevant is it to you? Actually, today, I took it to the back. I was just Yeah. You know how people read newspapers? It means they don't have a there's no need to have idle time anymore. I mean, I have an office mate who is on my Facebook and she's saying the worst idea she had was to watch the last episode of Parenthood in her office on her laptop. Because The classrooms back then didn't even have projector lights, and I think we had a VCR, perhaps, and that sometimes worked and sometimes didn't work. So a couple of years ago, the English department made it a requirement that um, 113B, 114, and 115 classes have a web component to the class. And the purpose of that is to engage the students to use um, various uh, forms for expression, like blogs. Um, and so that's why I incorporated it. Um, in my class, we do PowerPoint presentations as part of a project text that prepares them for their second essay. This way, the students are um, engaged in. Uh, visual arguments, presenting visual arguments, and that's done with PowerPoint. They can also show YouTube videos, for example. And uh, this semester we added Survey Monkey uh, so they can conduct their own survey. So it's a way for them to be more engaged with the material, not only doing traditional research, which still definitely is needed to have a place in essay writing, but also conducting their own surveys finding our own visual arguments. <laughs> Maybe next semester we'll draw our own visual arguments. Ooh. I don't know where it's going, but yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Could be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what benefit of drawbacks do you see with these types of assignments? Well, definitely the interest level rises when the students are engaged in YouTubing and um, presenting to the class. The other benefit is, um, in terms of the discussion, the students take over and the instructor is sort of taking a second seat. Um, I'm no longer leading the discussion, the students are. So that's a really great benefit. Draw back to these things is sometimes that the content level um, is not as wonderful as we would like because students are so focused on the visual aspect of it and then they're, what they're actually saying is not very logical or strong but we try to protect against that by going over the slides afterward. Right. And um, what kind of planning goes into it? write a blog. Uh, you'll get all kinds of things that are irrelevant. Um, really, a, a lot of time could be spent that is useless on creating a 
PowerPoint that really isn't saying much. So I give them specific slides, specific guidelines, um, and then specific tasks for each person in the group because often one person will take on the whole project because maybe they're more savvy with the blocks. So um, each student is responsible for one aspect of the project. The guidelines are written out. For example, the PowerPoint, one slide is questions around the issue. So one student investigates the questions that surround the issue. Another student might make quotes and have a slide on quotes. Another student is responsible for visual arguments. So they, the tasks are defined and the guidelines are set. And I think that's the best, most successful route. as pre-writing for their second essay. I always think it's a good idea to do presentations before writing the essay. Um, sometimes instructors will do it after as kind of interesting, like what was, what did you learn from the research and what conclusions, and sometimes students will read their essay. I think it's a really good use of uh, pre-writing tasks, so I hope that their essays will be more organized, their um, topics will be more well-rounded, so they're supposed to use the PowerPoints as like almost like a note-taking, a pre-writing, brainstorming. Like an organization. Yes. I'm hoping that the essays will be more organized and just have more wealth of information. So this is precisely why we don't use post-recording or this is pre-PowerPoint. Before we used to sign this, people would do little posters with little writing and nobody would read them and they would put on the board and talk about it and um, you know how many how many people went to the dollar store to buy a poster back then and now that we have PowerPoint, we no longer need these posters. Yeah, it can be lots of things, I don't know. So, um, it relates in, like, for example, taking the surveys. They're doing it themselves now, and they're maybe a little more interested in the information gathering. Likes are, to me, more conversational. I mean, they have an opinion, so we have to stick with the academic tone and the academic writing. So when I do blogs, I use it more for creative writing, kind of descriptive writing, storytelling unit. So it's more um, a personal voice and a first person voice, and maybe not as research, it's more a personal story. Pseudo requiring it. I, I don't think they come around and check if you're doing the audio for class, but um, to encourage us to go that route because I don't think I would have if, if it weren't a suggestion. Something like blogs, I was a little nervous. Like, I've never blogged, I've never commented on a blog. So, I created one. You do myself. blog now. Uh, well, I created one for Michael Club <laughs> in order to learn so I can teach it. And then, Survey Monkey is new this semester. And the thing with these students is you give them the assignment, like, Go learn blocks, go learn survey hacking. They are so technologically advanced that they can do it. Even if they've never done it, they are familiar with the process of special technology. And they'll create surveys that are very, very different than what I would. I would just answer yes or no, but they have drop, drop down sections, write the text, and the next one is multiple choice. And, I mean, they really run with the technology because they can. So I'm not afraid to assign it because I know that they're capable. So even if I have trouble learning, um, they can do it. And then, it, and then I learn from them. I was asking a student in last class, can you just show me something on survey time? He could show it to me in a few seconds or I could spend a few hours trying to figure it out. 
Um, and in the YouTube video, quite often what you have is very little spoken or written, but a video of somebody acting or a dog walking across the green meadow or something or other. And if you say, well, I'm only interested in writing, what you've really done is you've made it impossible for yourself to ask, to really answer the question which is being asked by your PhD.